Ukraine's frustration is growing with the restrictions the Biden administration has placed on using American weapons against targets in Russia. Soon, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will have his last chance to convince the American leader to change his position. The Economist writes about this. The publication recalled that the complete ban on hitting targets in Russia with American weapons was lifted in May when Washington reported that Ukraine could strike at a concentration of Russian troops on the other side of the border who were preparing to attack the city of Kharkov. When a month later the Ukrainians entered the Kursk region, they took with them anti-aircraft missile batteries which were deployed against Russian troops called upon to repel the invasion. No objections arose in Washington. In the past, the reason for barring Ukraine from using American weapons against targets in Russia was that it could provoke an escalating response from the Kremlin that would ultimately cause more harm to Ukraine and could even lead to Russia using nuclear weapons. In recent months, new reasons have emerged for restricting Ukraine. Unnamed officials suggest the administration does not want to jeopardize a future reset with Moscow. Other officials argue that allowing Ukraine to use ATACMS, which has a longer range than HIMARS, against targets in Russia would not change the strategic picture because there are not enough targets within range of the systems. Russia has relocated most of the aircraft used to launch the powerful glider bombs and in any case, such a scarce resource would be better used against targets in Crimea. The newspaper writes, it was also recently revealed that the Biden administration has blocked Britain and France from approving Ukraine's request to use Storm Shadow stroke scalp missiles outside Ukrainian territory. This was possible because the cruise missile contains American components. Experts, however, call arguments about the lack of targets within range of Western weapons or the lack of missiles dubious. Ben Hodges, a former commander of US forces in Europe, described the situation as a persistent excuse that is misleading and inaccurate. He said there was no moral or legal reason not to attack these targets. He noted that Mr. Biden had been getting a lot of, a lot of advice from Obama-era officials who were repeatedly wrong about Russia. And if Mr. Biden doesn't change his mind, his legacy will be tarnished. Mr. Zelensky will soon have his final chance to persuade Mr. Biden to embrace a new approach before he leaves office when they meet next week in New York on the sidelines of the annual UN General Assembly. The Economist adds, Meanwhile, Ukraine is working hard to develop long-range weapons, and by demonstrating what they can do, the Ukrainians are making an even stronger case for being allowed to use ATACMS and Storm Shadow stroke scalp against targets in Russia, says ground warfare expert Ben Barry. Military expert, head of the Center for Military Legal Research, Alexander Musienko, believes that the decision of the American administration regarding permission to strike Russia is already on the way. In his opinion, the fact that the enemy has once again begun to pull up S-300 installations closer to the Ukrainian border makes it necessary for the United States to grant permission for long-range strikes on Russian territory. Russia's youngest conscripts find themselves in the middle of a major war. The long-held sacred practice of avoiding the involvement of young Russian army conscripts in combat is being destroyed in the Kursk region. As the New York Times writes, it has become standard practice in Russia not to send conscripts to the front lines. This is provided for by law and accepted by all parents who hope to protect their sons from the carnage of war. But Ukraine's lightening fast invasion of the Kursk region has crossed out this agreement. Moscow was taken by surprise. Suddenly, war came to the conscripts. Hundreds of them were captured. Dozens are missing and potentially dead. Moscow's decision to send young, untrained soldiers to the battlefields of Afghanistan and Chechnya helped bolster the domestic opposition that forced the Kremlin to end those conflicts. So during the chaotic first days of Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine, when several hundred newly drafted soldiers were found in units that had crossed the border, Putin ordered military commanders to send them home. Only professional military personnel will carry out assigned tasks, Putin said at the time. However, when Ukraine broke through to the Kursk region, Putin did not recall the conscripts. Some newly minted soldiers from remote regions told their families that they were being sent to Kursk as reinforcements. 
the unexpected danger to the conscripts has sparked a bitter online battle between war supporters who accuse fathers of being soft on their sons and parents upset that a long-standing tradition has been broken. Russians have been outraged, criticizing the lack of proper training, poor weapons and the small number of elite descendants serving. Before sending conscripts into combat conditions, teach them how to handle weapons and provide them with modern means of warfare. There is no point in defending the borders of the motherland with bare hands, wrote Russian citizen Elena. Russia would need between 30,000 and 40,000 Russians to drive the Ukrainians out of Kursk, military analysts say. The fact that they have been slow to deploy a force of that size is a sign that they lack the necessary reserves. Russia is facing a labor shortage, said Pavel Luzin, a Russian military analyst questioning Putin's claim that the country has deployed nearly 700,000 troops to eastern Ukraine. These troops do not exist, so Russia needs to use conscripts. The use of conscripts in wars is taboo for the regime due to fears that it could fuel a national anti-war movement. According to reports in the independent Russian media at the time, untrained conscripts were thrown into bloody urban battles for which they were completely unprepared. Intense pressure from parent groups not only forced an end to the war, but also pushed the Kremlin to rewrite the rules to keep conscripts out of combat. The conscription issue is one of those hot-button issues for Putin personally because of Chechnya said Dara Masikot, an expert on Russian defense and security issues at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. The Russian leader has been extremely consistent in avoiding the use of conscripts, she said, adding that deploying poorly trained conscripts adds significant political risk with limited military benefit. After the Kursk invasion, more than 12,000 people signed a petition against the use of conscripts, but there were no reports of street protests.